Hello all, so in this short video I wanted to show how can we generate the weights and biases uh, from TensorFlow also. So as you might be knowing TensorFlow it's a very popular software implementation uh, for implementing different kind of neural network, right? So this is an example code for uh, evaluating MNIST data set. Okay. Uh, I hope TensorFlow is already installed in your system or you can just go ahead and just type uh, pip install uh, TensorFlow if you already have Python in your system uh, this will be installing TensorFlow in your system okay so yeah so here you can see uh, similar to in the other software first you are loading the MNIST data set so this MNIST data set it gets installed as part of TensorFlow itself so you don't have to download anything uh, separately so here they are just normalizing that input data and uh, this is where the neural network is built. Okay, so this is a sequential type of neural network. This represents the first layer, uh, the flattened layer that represents the first layer. Then the fully connected layers they call it as dense type. So you can see like there are four dense type: uh, 30, 30, 10, 10, just like our case. Uh, again, you can change it. You can add or remove whatever you want. And the activation function is here, sigmoid type for all the layers. And uh, there is no uh, additional layer for finding the maximum, and that is automatically done. And uh, this is where the layers are combined and the network is generated. And this is where the training is happening. So, here again, number of iterations you can specify. I'm specifying 20, 20 iterations and this is where you are evaluating it okay so uh, at the top you can see like x train y train x test y test so this is the training data and y is the label for this training data so this is a list which contains the information about uh, what is the actual digit representing each input and similarly this is the test data uh, the set of images 10,000 this will be 60,000 and this corresponds to the label of each data that is being uh, tested. That means which digit corresponds to each input. That is the information. So if you run it, it will just uh, build this neural network and test it and it will report what is the accuracy of the network. Okay. Now our aim is to get the weights and biases of the same neural network after training so this part i will add towards the end okay so again no big deal here you can see uh, these are some built-in functions model is representing that uh, neural network dot layers dot get weights that will get us the weights uh, from the neural network again uh, it will have five layers so the input layer it is just representing uh, no real neurons, you know, it is a flat representation of input. That's why I'm uh, starting this for loop from one to number of layers. Okay, so one, two, three, four. We have actually four layers, and from that, I'm going layer by layer. And this get weight, uh, it will return actually two lists. So the first one will represent the weights of that particular layer depending upon the value of i and second one get weights of zero will be a list of weights get weights of one is actually a list of biases although the function name is get weights okay so we will get it now how these weights are stored in tensorflow is different from the software that we used before in the previous software what happens is if uh, neuron one has uh, say 784 input there will be a list of 784 weights. So that's how it used to store. But here it is different. Here weights are stored according to input. For example, we have 784 input and it is going to the first layer which has 30 neurons. Okay. So instead of having uh, 30 lists of 784 weights, how TensorFlow stores is uh, it will have 784 lists of 30 weights each okay so the first weight represent the weight to the first neuron from the first input second element represent the weight 
of the first input to the second neuron, so on and so forth. So it's stored in some kind of reverse one. But for our script to work, because that is based on the previous software implementation, uh, we should have the same format. That means all the weights of a particular neuron should be stored as a single list. So that's why you can see I'm taking a transpose here. So it is just reverse matrix. That's how it is internally stored. So I'm just taking the transpose. Uh, so it will be in the same format that we need. But biases, uh, again, here it is stored in the exact way that is required because it doesn't make sense to say this particular bias is for this particular input. No, biases are always for a particular neuron. So that they have stored in the same way. Okay, so there is no need of uh, taking the transpose of bias list. So we get it and we just store it in this file. So that's it. So this should give us uh, a similar file with the name weights and biases and it should have the list of weights as well as biases. Okay, so let's try to run it. So Python TensorFlow, uh, we'll run it. So now you can see it is uh, doing the training. So the training here is much faster. Yeah, you can see. And you can see like each training, he is using 60,000 images for training. And you can see the accuracy. First iteration, it was only 52%. But as time passes, as the iteration number changes, increases, you can see the accuracy keeps on increasing. So after 20 iteration, it should be around 96, 97%. Let's see. Okay, now he has done. Okay, so uh, after 20 iteration, it is 98% using the training data and validation data, uh, but uh, using those test data, the remaining 10,000 images, uh, he is getting 95.89. So the accuracy is 95.89% for the test data. What we are interested is in this file which got generated, uh, which has similar structure as the previous weights and bias list, right? It, it should be similar. Now, it will have only weights and biases. Previous case, there were a number of neurons and all in the same file, but that information we are not uh, using. That's why that is not written to this file. Yeah, fine. So we need this file and we use this file to generate our weights and biases, the MIF files, as well as the neural network. Okay, so this I am putting at a special place. Okay, I'm putting it here. And this file name I need, weights and biases. And that I am using in this particular script. This script I have shown you before uh, for generating a sigmoid of different depth. Now more details, this is the main automation script that I'll discuss in the next tutorial. This basically has uh, all the previous automation that we discussed. This, this automatically runs the script for generating the weights and biases. From this file, which we saw in the previous tutorial, it also runs the script for generating the sigmoid memory content and some other extra thing. That I will discuss in the next tutorial. I just wanted to show you that uh, this one also works. You can get weights and biases from uh, TensorFlow also. So I'm just adding it and I am just running Python mnitsigner.py and he automatically generates those MIF files and all. Okay. And that automatically gets updated in this file actually, in this uh, project. So these files gets updated from uh, that script. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run simulation and see. So make sure these are sigmoid. Here also these are sigmoid. And this file name is what our file name you are using. And we are using 16 data width and 10 as the sigmoid memory address width. Okay, so let's run the simulation. Okay, so run simulation. 
and you can see at the beginning it is 100 then it came down but now it is improving let's see Okay, it gave 91%, but that is a little bit less than our software. This gave around 96%. Now, the interesting thing is, each time you run TensorFlow, the weights and biases that he will give uh, will be different because uh, he initializes all these weights and biases by some random number, and that random number is different each time you run it. Okay, so I'm just running it once again and see whether the new weights and biases will improve our hardware performance. Okay, he has done uh, this case. Actually, this is slightly uh, lesser, but anyway, let's see how is the hardware performance. So I will take this new weights and biases from here. I will put it here. And I will run this script once again and we will rerun the simulation. So last time it was 91%. So let's see how much he gives this time. So again, there will be some effect because TensorFlow is using 14 point number representation. Uh, that's also 32 bit. We are using only 16 bit representation for data. And also our sigmoid is not a smooth function. Uh, we are using an approximation for sigmoid. So these things will have effect on the accuracy. Yeah, so this time it is 95%. You can see uh, it's actually much better than previous time. Uh, so software implementation, it is 95.43 and hardware implementation, it is 95. So pretty close. Okay. Uh, we, we, we can't expect more than this with all these restrictions. Okay, so I hope uh, this will be helpful to you. Uh, those who do not have any idea about TensorFlow, you can just check in YouTube. There are a lot of good tutorial. Maybe I will add uh, one tutorial uh, for, for this MNIST data set in the description. Okay, so in the next one, we will discuss this main automation script, how this works. Okay, thank you.